we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a, a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. Hi Feast Laguna family and thank you for joining today's Feast at Home. If this is your first time, you came to the right place. Yes, hindi po kayo nagkamalit. There are no accidents in this world and God wanted you to be here. God wanted to bless you. Welcome home online. And there are big changes that happened in the world since COVID happened. The way we do things, the way we work, the way we do meetings, the way we, we order, the way people get married, the way, the way we do church, the way we feast. And nagbago. And one thing that nagbago din from the church, from the feast is what? Worship. Before when you enter the feast in many different places, magi enjoy ka kagad may tuktuk kagad, may drums, may guitar, may keyboards. Tapos parang magbaka group ka lang kanyan. Sige, kahit first time ka lang, I don't know what the feast is. Group lang ako, sige lang. Ang ganda. Okay to, yeah, Lord. Okay to ha. Ngayon na to ha. Parang radio songs lang. But now it's online. But mind you, even if it's online, Worship is still worship and worship is still God blessing you and God loving you. There are different types of people when you worship. Yung iba mga tao, ang tawag ito, listeners, they just listen. Why? Kasi baka mamaya, um, marinig akong kumanta, nakakahiya. Ang tawag ko naman sa iba, stand byers. Why stand byers? Oh, okay lang ba? Uh, antayin ko nalang mag-talk. Okay lang bang isat aside ko muna ito? Sige lang, sige lang. Yung iba naman, ang tawag ko naman dito, mga all-outers. Sige lang, I'm at home, I'm in the office, I'm watching the feast, there's music, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna groove, I'm gonna worship. My dear friends, what Whatever you're gonna do, I'm inviting you. Let God bless you in this worship. Let God bless you in this song. Maybe you're just listening. Maybe you're still looking. May kasama ba ako dito? Okay lang ba akong kumanta? Hindi ba ako sintonado? Whatever you're doing, let God bless you. If you're just gonna listen, let God love you while you're cooking. Let God love you while you're working, while listening to the worship. Because in this worship, God is loving you and miracles are already happening. So breathe. Let loose, let God in the songs of the worship join us and let God love you. Ano pang inaantay natin? Let's give our all. Allow God to bless you this morning. Allow God to bless you. Let's all worship the Lord.
welcome home. You came to the right place. There, is, there are no accidents. We're, this is your second time, your third time, your nth time, or your, uh, tawag ito, comebacker, matagal ka na wala. And now, wow, online of feast. I'm back to feast Laguna. This is not an accident. This is called dividends. God wanted you to be here because God wants to speak to you. God wants to bless you. I'm gonna ask you just two things as we give God's message for today. Number one is connect. Connect to people. Connect to those people ar uh, around you or just a comment section. Greet people. Say, hi, it's my first time. And then tag your friends. Do you know the beauty of virtual, the beauty of borderless feast right now? The entire group can now feast with you. Imagine this, your entire classroom, kung student ka, yung buong class, yung money, feast at the same time, the same channel. Imagine your entire department doing the feast. Imagine your entire organization, your entire barangay watching the feast. It can now happen. How? By you tagging your friends. Yes, punta ka sa comment section, type the at, and then tag all your friends that you want to, to invite in the feast today. Bring them there and make this your every Sunday experience. Number two, I'm just gonna ask you to open your heart. Open yourself. God wants to bless you. So don't think that itong message ito ang ganda pa sa kapitbahay ko. Para sa kanya to no. When God speaks to you, He wants to speak at you. He wants to bless you. He wants to change you. He wants to give you the best. So we're gonna have God's word now. Let's pray the beautiful prayer that we pray in the feast in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. May your word be our light today, Father God. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 6, and this is God's message to us. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters. I repeat, no one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Let's now welcome a dear brother to give God's message to you, Brother Darwin Zaniga. Good morning, Feast Laguna. Thank you, Brother Drews, for leading us to that soul-uplifting worship. Salamat din, bro, for sharing the gospel reading for today. May magtatay naglalakad sa isang kalsada at sila'y nag-uusap. Nagtanong yung anak sa tatay niya, sabi ng bata, Tay, how big is God? Tapos hindi malaman ng tatay kung anong isasagot. While they were walking, pagtingin nila sa taas, nakakita sila ng eroplano. Sabi ng tatay, Nak, nakikita mo yung eroplano na yon? Sabi ng bata, Opo! Anong masasabi mo? Sabi ng tatay. Sabi ng anak, Maliit! So they continued their walking hanggang mapunta sila sa isang airport. Napadaan sila sa isang airport. Tapos doon sa airport na yon may mga nakapark na eroplano. Nagtanong yung tatay, Anak, nakikita mo yung mga eroplano na yon? Sabi ng bata, Opo! Anong masasabi mo? Sabi ng tatay, Ang lalaki po ng mga eroplano. Sabi ng tatay, Yes! And that's how it is also with God. The closer you are to Him, the bigger He is in your life. 
My dear friends, welcome to our talk for today entitled, Size Doesn't Matter. Yes, size doesn't matter. What matters is how close we are to God. Amen. My dear friends, walong buwan na po nating hinihimay ang gospel ni St. Matthew. Nasa chapter 6 pa tayo. And so far, we have found and we have mined spiritual golds from this inspiring gospel. Stay with us today and we will find out more. Are you ready? Let me start by talking about multitasking. Isang araw, si Maria galit sa asawa niya, si Juan. Sabi niya, nakaupo ka na naman dyan. Wala ka halos natatapos. Di ka marunong mag-multitask. Tingnan mo ako, ang dami ko nang nagawa dahil sa multitasking. Sabi naman ni Juan, nagbumultitasking din ako ah. Sabi ni Maria, anong multitasking? Sabi ni Juan, eto, nakaupo ako habang nagigames at nanunood ng TV. Saka ikaw, sabi ni Juan, di ka, na, di ka rin naman magaling magmultitask? Sige nga, try mo ang pagsabayin ang maupo muna at manahimik. <laughs> Hindi kaya ni Maria. Wala siyang nagawa kahit isa man doon sa dalawa. Pero, my dear friends, pansin niyo ba sa mga mag-asawa? Magaling talaga mag-multitask ang mga babae. Nasa nature nila yun eh. Si Nell, alam niyo ba, kaya niya habang naghahalo ng niluto, may kausap, may katex, tapos nagliligpit pa yan ng mga gamit habang nagkukuskos ng basahan sa sahig. <laughs> Paano niya nagagawa yun? Sinasabihan ko nga na isa-isahin mo lang love, isa-isahin mo lang, huwag mong pagsabay-sabayin. But we guys, we are terrible multitasker. Hindi natin gawa, kaya gawin yon because by, by nature, we are one tasker. Alam nyo kung bakit? Ganito kasi yan. Yung utak ng, or yung, yung brain ng lalaki at yung brain ng babae, ibang-iba. Yung sa lalaki, pag in mo yung, yung brain niyan, para siyang may mga box. May mga, mga boxes yan. May box para sa kotse, may box para sa sports, may box para sa, sa career, may box para sa pamilya. So pag, pag ginawan mo ng task yan, kukunin niya yung isang box, ba, uh, box tapos doon siya magkoconcentrate. Hindi siya magpo-focus sa iba, doon lang sa box na, na kinuha niya. Ibang-iba naman sa babae. Yung mga babae naman parang mga wire na connected sa isa't isa. So kapag Kapag pinag-uusapan niya yung, yung, yung career, ah, dugtong-dugtong na yun. Pati yung pamilya, yung love life, yung, yung, yung relationship. So, dugtong-dugtong yun. Kaya kaya nilang pagsabayin ng isip yung, yung mga task. Yung lalaki hindi focus lang. Pero sa ngayon kasi, yung, yung mga ganong strategy, yung mga ganong talent, napag-aaralan yan. Kaya may mga tao na ngayon na magaling mag-multitask. Lalo na ngayon, di ba, na may pandemic. So, maraming naiisip ang mga tao na natututunan talaga nilang gawin. Because many tend to, more, to be more creative. We tend to think on a bigger scale. Tapos yung tendency nun, kapag nag-iisip tayo ng mas, mas malawak, nagkakaroon ng pagkakataon to do things simultaneously. So yes, humans can multitask. Question. Can our hearts multi-worship? Diba? Can our hearts multi-worship? Multi I believe we can. Hindi natin kaya. Because I believe that we can only worship one God. Sa mga ganitong bagay, hindi natin pwede sabihin na sana dalawa ang puso ko. Because at the end of the day, we cannot divide our hearts. Amen? This is the same with what our hearts treasure. Our reading for today is all about treasures. And to help us dig deeper and find more gold for our readings for today, let us welcome Brother Bo Sanchez. I've been a spiritual leader for the past 40 years, but a financial teacher for the past 20 years. And so I teach my favorite investment vehicle on planet Earth, which is the stock market. No, not trading, but long-term investing in gigantic companies where you put small amounts every month. Now, there are other investment vehicles like 
business and real estate, and I like them too. But friends, let me say this, that I believe the greatest investment in the world that you can ever make is not the stock market, not the business, not real estate. The greatest investment in the world is giving your life to God. I totally believe in that. And that's why Jesus said in our key passage, I want to read it to you now. It says, Jesus said, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Now, Bible scholars will say that Jesus talked about the three kinds of wealth that in ancient times were very valuable. That's clothes and next would be food and next would be gold. Now, the first thing he said was where moths eat them. Now, obviously, you know, this would be, you know, clothes. And hey, think about it. You know, when you, when you go through scripture, you find that people did value, you know, cloaks and shawls and tunics. Speaking of tunics, when Jesus was crucified, the Roman soldiers were gambling for his seamless tunic. And has things changed today? No, you, we, we value clothes and there are clothes that are very, very expensive. Trivia, what is the most expensive clothes out there in the world today? The dress of Marilyn Monroe. And just in case you want to buy it for your coming birthday, it's $5.6 million. That's right, about 300,000 pesos. It's like crazy, right? Now think with me. Um, oh, I, I, wanna, I wanna share with you this crazy story. Uh, just a little side, side light. I was, I was, uh, I found this leather jacket that was on sale 75%. It was so, so wonderful. And like, like if I wore, wore it, I, I look like an action star. Yeah. Especially if I wore shades, you know? Yep. Uh, not Tom Cruise, but yung contrabida ni Tom Cruise, the arch enemy. Anyway, <laughs> But but I liked it so much, like I wore it everywhere, which is bad news, right? Because I live in Manila, so I was sweating like crazy, but still wearing it. This ganda. And my wife finally put her foot down and said, stop wearing it. You know? I said, okay, okay. You know, and I put it in the closet. Well, guess what? couple of months after I opened the closet and there my leather jacket frayed and the leather disintegrating. And I could still wear it, but I will, and I will still look like an action star, but the dead action star of uh, Train to Busan, eaten by 3,000 zombies, okay? <laughs> Basically, what I'm sharing to you is that they don't last. And that's the point of Jesus, you know? Are you going to invest in stuff that will not last? And then he, he said about rust that destroys them. What does this mean? Biblical scholars will say and study the original Greek words, and they said Jesus was probably not thinking about like iron and the rust. No, it's talking, Jesus would be talking about, because it, it talks about being eaten away. And I'll, I'll give you a picture about this rich guy with huge vast lands and he had a bumper crop of corn and grain and he placed all of it in his big bodega, not knowing that rats and worms, yes, rats, think ratatouille, you know, nibbling away on his wealth little by little until it's this all destroyed. And that's, that's our wealth. That's what's going to happen. And then finally, Jesus says about where thieves break in and steal. And the original Greek word was break in. And it talks about, you know, more literally digging in. Because in Palestine, the houses there, the, the walls were pretty flimsy, clay, cl made of clay. And, and thieves would easily dig into that. And, and then get all the value, valuable stuff inside your house. And so, you know, imagine you're coming home from a trip and you see this big hole, gaping hole on your wall. You, you rush in and you find out that the gold bracelet and the gold necklaces, you know, that you inherited from your mom and your, and your grandmother are all gone. Friend, let me ask you this question. Have you ever lost material wealth? If so, I mean, have you? You know, thieves break in and steal, um, fire, flood, destroying your home. Wrong investment decisions made you lose thousands, perhaps even millions. A business failure. You know, when you lose possessions, money, people, relationships, I want you to know that every tragic loss is a key opportunity for spiritual growth. 
really, I believe in that. And, you know, I remember every time, and hey, I've been there, I've done that. I've gone through so many losses. I've, I've failed in 18 businesses. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Just, just, and, and, and I know they, they, they made me grow and they made me learn. And, and, I've, and the reason why my small businesses are successful today, but I want you to know that, that they were painful. They were absolutely painful. And I would go to God and I would cry to God. And then I would hear God tell me, and I want to share this with you. And I, I pray that it will speak to you. God, I would hear God's voice in my heart say, you're still wealth, wealthy because you still have me. I am your real wealth. And, and this is what happens when you realize that all the material things and all the things of this world and relationships and popularity, all of that, when you lose them, you, 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 you run to God and you discover that he is your greatest treasure. And so I, I, I want to I wanna just, just share that with you. Don't hold on to material things. Detach so that you can have your one true attachment, which is God. Here's number two, to deepen. A fair warning. This is going to be deep and profoundly beautiful. Now, Jesus says, don't store for yourselves treasures, you know, where moths destroy and rust, etc., and thieves break in and steal. No, this is what you do. Store your treasures in heaven. Now, for the longest time, my interpretation is this, that if I give to God anything right now, it's going to be deposited in a special account in heaven's bank. And, and I'm, I, I'm going to withdraw it when I finally arrive there. So that was my conception. And because of that, I would preach to people that the only wealth that you can ever keep is the wealth that you give away. And I still believe in that. But you know what? One of the things I've, I've, I just want to share with you is uh, I think it begs the question now, and, and, and I'm going to tweak on that whole understanding with two questions. Number one, this question, I want to ask, what does heaven mean? When Jesus said, store your treasures in heaven, what does that mean? Number two, what does it mean to, if, if I, want to, I want to find out what heaven means, and I want to find out, number two, what does treasures in heaven mean? Now, Again, if you ask a lot of people, what does, heaven, what does heaven mean? Well, heaven is like this retirement home, eternal retirement home, this nice, peaceful place where, where you sit on white, fluffy clouds and where you play the golden harp. You know, that, that's, that's our kind of thinking. And uh, yeah, so, so, but for Matthew, it's much deeper than that. Heaven, and let, I hope you're listening, heaven is where God is king, where his will is done. And it starts now. It starts here. And yes, it continues in the afterlife, but it starts here. And so what is treasures in heaven? Now, let me tell you that I've always thought that heaven was like this gated subdivision, that if you do a lot of good work in this world, you're going to be rewarded with a mansion a gigantic mansion. If you did really a lot of good work, you're going to have this castle that's as big as Disneyland. And then beside it is this gorgeous lake as big as the Pacific Ocean. You know, beautiful. But if you're somebody who didn't do good in this world, in fact, you did bad, but at the very last six seconds of your life, in the last gasp of air before you died, you said, and I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me prayer. Then you still end up in heaven, but you will have a cute bungalow. A cute bungalow in the outskirts of heaven somewhere, maybe beside the garbage heap. Okay, so, <laughs> and, and I, I, listen to me. After years of reflecting, and praying, I've come to realize that that whole image is pretty lacking. It's shallow. Because if you have God in your life, hey, who cares how big your mansion is? Can I invite you to deepen your faith and understand? Man, think about it. What am I saying? I'm saying size doesn't matter. <laughs> that your treasure is being with God. My, my, my point is this, and I, I hope you're listening. I, I just want to share this with you. Um, 
When Jesus says, store your treasures in heaven, he was calling you to reorder your hierarchy of values. He wants you to align your values with his values. He wants you to treasure what God treasures. And what does God treasure? He treasures you. I'm going to say that again. You are his treasure. And he treasures the people around you and those who are suffering. And if you, and I'm going to ask you that question, do you treasure what God treasures? Let me tell you a true story. In the year 258, that's right, 1,900 years ago, there was this guy, his name was Lawrence, and he was the treasurer of the church in Rome, very small church there, and there was intense persecution. The Roman emperor was just you know, imprisoning Christians and putting them to death and so on. And because of that intense persecution, Lawrence decided, you know, being, being the treasurer, you know, he knew that they're just going to confiscate the wealth of the church. So he distributed the wealth, the poorest of the poor. And this is what happened. Um, a few weeks later, Lawrence was caught and he was brought before the Roman emperor. And this is what happened. The Roman emperor asked him, ordered him, surrender the wealth of the church. And Lawrence said, give me three days to collect the wealth of the church and I'll give them to you. And so he was given three days. After three days, he goes back to the Roman emperor with the poorest of the poor and the lame and the blind and the beggars. And he announces to the Roman emperor, this is the wealth of the church. Of course, the emperor put him to death, right? And, and <laughs> burned him. Uh, but I think about that and I say, it is so true. God treasures and values things that we don't. We don't value the poor. We don't value the suffering. But to him, this is what he values. And if you're part of the kingdom of God, if you report to King Jesus, and if you follow him, you are making a decision to value what he values, to treasure what he treasures. And I, I pray that you, you make this decision. There are three more things that you need to do in order to treasure what he treasures. Happy Sunday, brothers and sisters. It's so good to be here at the feast. And as promised, we invited, again, as promised, our brother who's part of our family in the feast, a multi-awarded actor, Sobrang versatile po nito. Mapa comedy, <laughs> mapa drama, sobrang galing. And uh, extremely talented brother. But most importantly, he is a very happy family man. And at the same time, our humble brother here in the feast, mga kapatid, with the love of the Lord, let us all welcome brother Wendell Ramos. Woo! <laughs> Why don't you greet everybody, bro? Yes, um, well, magandang, magandang araw po sa inyo, Brother John, and to all the viewers and the uh, feasters natin. Hindi lang feasters, yung mga bagong nanonood ngayon sa atin, uh, for sure, na best na, na para makinig ngayon to inspire more people about family. Magandang, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. And, uh, Happy Sunday po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Pa paano ba mabuhay dito na isa sa buhay mo yung paniniwala mo kay Lord? How do you live out your Christian commitment commitment in a in a in circumstances in a situation like the showbiz na napaka-challenging? Pa paano mo ito nagagawa, bro? <clears throat> Kasi pag nasa entertainment ka, brother Jen, parang parang ang nangyayari po, no? is paano mo mapiplease yung mga tao? Paano mo mapapaniwala sa'yo? How, how will you market your, yourself to uh, and um, parang letting people um, to like you? Paano ka nilang gugustuhin? Yun yung una mong nasa isip. So lahat nakakalimutan mo muna. Mm -hmm. yung po, hindi ko po 
sinasabi na lahat ng nasa industries ganon. Yung mga desires natin, alam mo, hindi po masama na magkaroon tayo ng mga pangarap at gusto sa buhay natin. Especially, pag nakita mo yung kapwa mo, artista, uy. Or, hindi na sa artista na lang. Sa isang company. Pag meron kang mga kasama, mga colleagues mo, uy, bakit meron siya nito? Bakit, uy, ba? wow. So, lahat ng challenges nandun, paano mong i-maintain yung pagkatao mo? So, ang ginagawa ko ngayon, Brother John, Uh, na-maintain ko, na-control ko, and I'm, I'm very glad, no, and I'm very blessed na yung pagpapalaki po sa akin ng nanay ko, na na-maintain ko po yun. Ano po yun? Yung, yung simplicity, yung wag mo kunin lahat, lahat ng mga bagay, hindi mo pwedeng kunin lahat sa mabilis na paraan, hmm. hindi mo pwedeng makuha sa isang magic, lahat ng bagay. So you have to to work on it. Lahat. At saka, kung ano yung meron ka lang muna, huwag mong pilitin. Kasi sometimes, pag nilagpas mo, ah, gusto ko nito, gusto ko nito, yun yung parang point eh. Parang doon ka kakalas. Yun yung challenge. Doon ka makakalas eh. So up to now, up to now, Brother John, yan po yung battle ko. Hindi lang sa pagig sa, sa industriya namin. Hindi lang po sa entertainment. No? Ang battle ko po everyday is kung paano ko makokontrol na yung mga gusto ko, yung mga gusto kong makuha, eh, makontrol ko yung sarili ko na kailangan kukunin ko yun kasama ko si God mm-hmm. in His time. Beautiful. Na, Beautiful. Yun po yung ano, oh, yung kasi, to be honest, marami pa akong gusto, brother. Gusto ko pang dagdagan kung ano po yung meron ako. Dahil nakikita ko yung iba, meron din po sila. Mm-hmm magpe-pray ako. Kayo na kong bahala, pero gusto ko po nito. Pero gamutin niyo po yung puso ko para, para maging masigla and uh, maging grateful lagi kung ano yung nakikita ko dito sa pagkainan ko, kung ano yung dumadating sa akin, kung ano yung dumating na opportunity, kailangan pagtrabawuhan ko pa rin lalo. Alam mo yun, maging, mm-hmm. mag, hindi ako maging perfect lagi, pero gumawa ng tama. Gawin ko ng tamang proseso. You know, uh, maraming paraan para makuha natin yung mga gusto natin sa buhay ng mabilis. Mm. Pero, Galing. pero, depende po yan eh, kung paano mong gagawin eh, kung makakasira sa pagkatao mo na hindi naman nakikita ng iba, medyo dun yata po ako natutuwa sa sarili ko and uh, ay, kaya ako nagpapasalamat sa ministry natin sa The Feast, no? At sa pagiging katoliko ko po, talagang solid yun yung kasangkapan ko ngayon, yun yung gamit ko ngayon, yun ang weapon ko ngayon. That's why kung ano man yung mga desires ko, nakokontrol ko kasi ministry natin nandyan. Mm-hmm. To be humble and wait for your time. Mga specific moments na nagkakaroon ka ng dilemma na you need to choose between ano ang ino-offer sa harap mo na very tempting tapos yours for the taking pero alam mo rin at the back of your mind na ko hindi ito ang gusto Oof. ni Lord sa akin kasi bro I mean you 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 have it all the very things that people desire pray for and could only dream about pare you've got the looks man you've got uh, people come to you you have the people's adulation iniidulo ka ng lahat tinusunod money is coming to you and more can come kumbaga Uh, gawin mo lang ito. Pero, alam mo, nakapag ginawa mo, uh, taliwas ito sa gusto ni Lord sa buhay mo. May mga ganyan bang pagyayari sa buhay mo, bro? Ang dami. Mm-hmm. Ang dami, brother Jen. And um, ayoko pong maging magaling ngayon. Pero to be honest, no? ang dami kong naging... In- Sorry po. Sorry po sa iba. Ang dami kong naging ano, offer. And um, well... Matured na tayo lahat sa mga nakakaunawa po. No? Meron mga, at mas maganda na rin to para malaman na iba. May mga indecent proposal po ako. <clears throat> oh, mm-hmm. Sobra. Nakakayurak ng pagkatao. Why? Alam mo, brother, dyan yun yung... Yan po yung isa sa nakakainis. Mm-hmm. Nakakainis, and ako ngayon, 
pray naman natin itong mga testimony ko ngayon. Brother John, nakakainis yan kasi sisirain yan yung pagkaano mo. Yung example ko po na yun, kung sino man yung mga gumuha nun, mga indecent proposal na hindi lang naman dito sa industry namin yan. Buong mundo, lagana po yan. Social media, lahat yan. Okay? Brother John, isang ganun lang, oh. Mm-hmm. Makukuha ko. Mm-hmm. Karang, gusto, relax? Yeah. Kasi may kasabihan tayo, make your life hard so that your life will become easy in time. Di ba? May ganun tayo eh. Mm-hmm. So, pero anong klaseng, anong klaseng mga gagawin mo mga hirap yun? <laughs> Siyempre, dapat ba ito? Yung hard dapat, talagang parehas na hard. Talagang effort ka. Pero minsan, yung mga like yung indecent na yan, ang hirap brother dyan kasi uh, imagine isang igla pag naging okay, lahat ng gusto ko. Mm-hmm. Lahat, yung sinasabi mo, yung kapalit. Mm-hmm. One time, big time. One time, big time. So, ang mahirap dito, brother John, no? parang gusto mo, parang ang binibili. Dahil iniisip mo, especially kung meron kang pamilya na talaga namang gusto mong tulungan. Mm-hmm. Even if ka, kahit nga mayaman ka pa eh. Nangyayari yan ganyan eh. Iba talaga, brother John, wag mo sabihin mayaman ka. Kapag mayaman ka, tatapatan pa rin kita ng pera. Kasi iba-iba ang klase ng yaman na maaaring meron kayong property, meron kayong negosyo pinagtatrabaho. Pero pag nilitagang ka ng pera mm-hmm. and binibigay sa'yo, mm-hmm. ang hirap nung brother John. Tama. Ang hirap nung brother John. Ang hirap nun. So, nangyari sa akin yan. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, as, as you were saying that yung research mo yan, di ba? Tapos, the offers being made to you, the, the situations that you get confronted with, the temptation na hinaharap yeah. is also uh, happening to others. Ang tanong ko ito, bro, yung iba sa Tagalog bumigay. Pero ikaw, uh, you kept uh, your faith. You, you did not compromise. So, Ang tanong ko, ano ang nasa isip mo? Bakit mo tinanggihan? Kasi nga, sasabihin ng iba, practical lang naman yan, pare. Wala naman makakala. Yeah, ah, totoo. Pare, uh, ayaw mo ba niyan? Minsan may justification pa para sa pamilya mo. Uh, wag, wag, Oo uh, nga, totoo. Kung baga, isi-sugar ko. Wala naman makakaalam. Wala, wala naman makakaalam. Oo. Artista ka, may pera ka naman, may offers ka, walang mag-iisip Tama. sa'yo. So, ang tanong ko, bro, Bakit ka hindi bubigay in short and you ano ba yung thought process mo anong nasa isip mo noon at ginawa mo pa rin yung tama Alam mo biglang pumasok sa akin yung sinabi ng ma'am ko lagi no o hindi lahat ng bagay bigay ng Dios mm-hmm. So at that atong time na to tayo ko po sabihin prime ng ano ko to prime ng ng mga nakabataan ko. Mm-hmm. Mga 20s, mid 20s, yan. So, yun yun. Yun yung prime. Kung baga, pero imagine, no, yung binigay ng mom ko nung bata ako at sa mga pagsiserve ko noon sa simbahan. Mom, bumalik. Oo nga. Oo nga, bumabalik yung ano. So, kailangan kong paggawin to. Imagine, no, brother, the following day, ilang weeks kung dinadala yun. Oh. Mm-hmm. Tapos meron na namang offer, brother. Mm-hmm. Properties na. Oh, okay. Tumataas Imagine, yung stakes. Tumataas yung yeah. offer. No? Mm-hmm. Sabi ko, ano ba itong nangyari? At pero biglang may mga papasok, may mga pa-shortcut na, ano? Di ba? Mm-hmm. May mga offer na shortcut, pero shortcut. hindi na sa kanya eh. So, ang hindi, Hirap ng battle na yun. Ang hirap ng battle ko na yun. Alam mo, Brother John, hindi ko alam kung bakit. Buti na lang po. Um, may ugali ako na yung pride ko siguro. Yung pride ko po. Nakatulong po sa akin. Yung hmm. pride ko na <clears throat> may siguro blessing na rin po sa akin. Hindi ako binibili. Kaya ko yan. Hmm. Kaya yeah. ko yan. kaya ko yan, 
hindi ko alam kung pinagamit po ni God sa akin yun. Humility, yan po ang number one rule ko sa buhay ko. Mm-hmm. Sa pagkatao. Pero may mga times, yung pride ko na yun, yun yung nag-save sa akin. Pride ko na naniniwala ako Jesus Christ. Pride ko naniniwala ako kay God na in time, ibigyan niya ako ng mga gusto ko sa buhay ko yun. At kung hindi, hindi kayo magbibigay niya. Hindi ikaw, hindi ikaw, hindi ikaw. Especially kung binibili mo ako. Mm-hmm. Galing. Galing. So, yeah. so up to now, ang kasangkapan ko ngayon, ang weapon ko ngayon, is yung approval na lang ni God. Beautiful. So maraming nang naka, nakalista sa akin, bibigyan niya na ako nito, bibigyan niya na ako nito, bibigyan niya na ako nito. Every day, brother, pagkagising ko sa umaga, merong mga negosyo ngayon na dumadating sa akin, pinagtatrabaho ko to. Mm, At behind yeah. that, ang nasa likod po nun, yun, nandun yung desire ko, andun yung, well, ayaw kong desire, andun yung pangarap ko ulit. Gusto kong dagdagan to, gusto kong dagdagan to, gusto kong, dagdagan, gusto kong gawin to. Kasi yun yung normal na tao. Meron tayong mm. mga pangarap sa buhay natin. Pero, yung sinasabi ko, that's why I'm keep on saying na, yung approval ni God, Beautiful. nakakasana. Mm. Bala na lang siya kailan niya ibibigay. Pero nakita mo, everyday yung hope ko po, hindi nawawala. Behind that, uh, yung mga businesses, yung ano mga ginagawa natin, small business man yan, doon nandun dapat sa likod para sa akin, nandun sa likod yung big picture na nakikita mo. Galing. Nai-open ko to kung ano yung totoong gusto ko talaga. And actually, hindi ko naman pinlano itong sasabihin ko. Pero alam mo, brother, Beautiful. yun po yung totoong nararamdaman ko ngayon. Be mm-hmm. grateful kung ano meron ka. Um, that's why Beautiful. Ang ito pa isa pa, meron pa akong nas, masasagot ko ni magandang tanong kung paano yung naging <laughs> ano ko, kung ano yung sikreto ko paano sila tanggihan. Mm-hmm. Brother, sa ministry niyo, sa ministry natin dito sa The Feast, dito ko natatanggap kung gaano ko, kung gaano ko kaswerte ngayon sa buhay ko, kung gaano mm-hmm. ko ka-blessed. Beautiful. Hindi ko nakita ang kayamanan ko sa material na bagay lang. Beautiful. Nakita ko dito yung kagaanan ng buhay ko every time I go or attend to our feast. Beautiful. And aside from that, sa mass natin. Diba? Mm-hmm. Uh, yun, yun. Yun yung sikreto ko ngayon. Para hindi ka mawala sa focus mo, ikip mo kung ano yung nagpapatibay sa pagkatao mo. Ikip mo kung sino yung nagbibigay mm-hmm. ng buhay sa'yo. Which is... Beautiful. Brothers, sa ministry natin, ang ganda. Sa feast natin ngayon, ang ganda oh. Beautiful. Feeling ko, yaman na natin. Bakit? Ang yaman natin kasi para positive lang lahat yung may asa mo. So yun, kayo po yung dahilan. Kayo yung dahilan. Well, si God ang dahilan ko. Bakit, bakit ko po? Bakit Beautiful. Bakit ko nalalabanan yung Amen. everyday, every minute na temptation in general sa situation ng buhay natin para masira ang pagkatao natin. So, Beautiful. That's all, yeah. Bro, standing up for God and choosing God may consequences. Mm-hmm. Diba? Halimbawa, oh. you choose God in this situation, some friends that you have may not like your decisions, people make fun of you, and some, of, of course, would get you to miss opportunities. Meaning, gagawa ng paraan para to make life miserable for you kasi tinanggihan mo ko uh, uh, hindi mo alam kung sino ang tinanggihan mo ganun ano yeah. so uh, again ultimately making a decision for god many times has a cost and has a high price to pay but you're willing to pay that so ngayon uh, nasagot mo na kanina somehow but uh, in in your experience ano ang uh, how do you deal with the cost of the expensive cost of following Jesus and at the same time ano ba ang rewards nung si Lord ang sinunod mo at uh, ginawa mo yung tama sa totoo lang brother John baka ubos na ang oras one week Pa, nagkukwento pa rin ako sa iyo ng testimony ko kung paano kaganda ang ginawa sa akin ng Panginoon and Amen. sa lahat. You know, and to inspire people. Lalo Amen. na tinanggal ko na po yung, yung nakablock dati sa isip ko. Alam niyo po mga viewers, no? 
mga fisters, mga kapatid ko dyan. Binigyan niya ako ng work kasi eh. Mm-hmm. Binigyan niya ako ng work eh. Sa, sa dinami-dami po ng tao ngayon sa Pilipinas, sa dinami-dami ng higit na may talent sa akin, sa dinami-dami ng higit na mas maganda po ang itsura sa akin, or wag na po tayo doon sa itsura, sa higit na mas maraming deserve, deserving na na magkaroon ng opportunity kesa sa akin. Pero ako mm-hmm. po yun nandito and up to now nandito ako. So ano po ang hihilingin ko? I mean, ang kailangan siguro sa atin bawat tao is maging, magkaroon tayo ng kakontentuhan sa sarili. Be mm-hmm. grateful kung ano yung binibigay ni God. Ang gaan ng pakiramdam ko ngayon, lahat ng small things na a-appreciate ko. Mm-hmm. So yun yung Holy Spirit eh. Beautiful. Kasi, sometimes, may mga tao, kaya minsan, dumadagdag yung mga needs natin, masyado natin kinukuha yung mga bagay naman na meron na talaga pala tayo. Kasi, hindi mo na na-appreciate yung small things. Bro, I have two last questions for you. No? Naku, damihan mo pa, love. brother John. <laughs> damihan mo pa, please. Nakikiusap ako. Baka may oh. mga questions yung viewers natin dyan. <laughs> okay. Bro, nabanggit mo na ito kanina. At ang one of the things na paulit-ulit mong sinasabi is that this is a daily battle for you and me. At totoo yan. No? Ang temptation, hindi yan. Kahit si Jesus. Diba? Yeah. When he was in the desert, he was tempted. Pero ang sabi dyan, after no naging victorious siya, the devil left him for a while. Nakakalimutan ng iba yung salitang for a while eh. Kasi yeah. uh-huh. nila, tapos okay. na, hindi na siya binalik. Okay. Eh. Diba? So, bumabalik ang temptation sa atin. At narinig ko sa iyo kanina, ang mga hamon na ito ay dumarating sa pang-araw-araw. Ang tanong yeah. ko, nasagot mo na yung iba kanina, baka lang may gusto kang idagdag, Bro, saan ka humuhugot ng lakas mo sa pang-araw-araw? Siyempre. Well, of course, every day, yan yung pagkain at inumin ko, no? Um, sigad. Sigad talaga. Mm-hmm. Sigad po talaga lahat. Siya kasi lahat, eh. Siya mm-hmm. everything, eh. So, emotionally, physically, mm-hmm. Siya, siya yung, siya yung, siya yung pagka, again, um, bago mag-start yung day ko, bago mag-start yung day ko, Brother John, mm-hmm. sa kanya ako kumukuhan ng lakas. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Sa kanya, sa, sa wife ko. And alam nyo, matutuwa ka dito, Brother John, binigay yung asawa ko sa akin ni God mm-hmm. para ayusin ako. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Kasi yun yung commitment na sa totoo lang po, yan, dito yung nagbibiro ako sa asawa ko. Yeah, pero everyday, yun yung, sang, yung, yun yung, yun yung daladala ko. Mm-hmm. Na hindi alam ng asawa ko na siya yung instrumento na binigay ni God sa akin. Mm-hmm. Kasi una-una, love to eh. Siya yung Beautiful. love. Beautiful. Siya po yung love. So, siya. Siya po yung ano, instrumento. Mm-hmm. Everyday kahit meron kami mga konting hindi pagkakaintindihan. Pero alam mo, lumiliit yung mga dating problema namin. So everyday, yung po yung bit-bit-bit-bit ko. Pag nakita ko yung family ko, siya, mga anak ko, sila yung bit-bit ko. And then God, okay, let's do this for this day. And uh, thank you again for this day. And then yung ministry natin, yung pala yung, ano, no, yung, pala yung lalim ng pag kinasal ka na. Mm-hmm. Kaya pala, they're trying to at least encourage yung mga nagsasama. Magkasal kayo. Magkasal kayo. Mag-isang dibdib kayo. Mm-hmm. Kasi, yung pala yung lalim nun. Beautiful. Dahil dun pala sa asawa mo, yung commitment mo, andyan yung temptation, hindi mo na pwedeng gawin. Mm-hmm. Be at least, be honest. Be lo- so lahat eh, kung, kung mabasahin mo, di ba? Sabi ko nga, ang tagal kong naging asawa si Kukay, pero kailan lang kami kinasal? Ilang years na tayo, ma'am? You know, three years pa lang. Mm-hmm. Kaya I'm encouraging everyone na, na hindi naman po talaga susi ang kasal, pero napakalaking bagay ang ikasal talaga, no? 
Yun yung ano ko, yun yung gift ko. Yun yung siya, sila. Every day, sila yung sa kapang ko to do good Kale. things. Kasi ayoko may mangyayari po sa akin pagtagal ng araw. Pagdating na araw, ayoko magpagamit kahit kanino. Gamit in general na baka for your own sake, bibigyan mo ko ng pera, gamitin mo akong ganyan, kumita ka or whatsoever. Kung saan mo man, napapasama ako or mapasama ka, masama ka. I'm not here to judge, no, people. Pero, pero, Let's get it on. There you have it, mga kapatid. In person, live, a story, a life. Somebody who, of course, first made his desires under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's normal that we have desires. In fact, it is God who gave us these desires. But these gifts that God has given to us, will only make sense and we will find only enjoyment in them if these desires are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Tama po si San Agustin, si St. Augustine, when he said, Lord, our hearts are restless until they rest in Thee. Pwede naming makuha ang lahat. Pwede nating makuha ang sinasabi natin na mga desires natin ngunit Kung wala ito sa Panginoon, they will never be able to fill our hearts. Para kang naglagay, kahit puno ka ng tubig, ang tangke ng kotse mo, it will not run. It will not make sense. Because it's only God who can fill it up. At ito ho ang ipinamalas at pinak- ang kwenento sa atin ni Wendell that all of these desires, there's nothing wrong with them. But they will only make sense and you will only find enjoyment in them if you put Jesus first in your heart and he will put order, sense, and joy in it. Pangalawa, we've heard from our brother Wendell that he's someone who donates, who gives a donation of himself. Number one, to the designs and will of God in his life. Palagi niyang sinasabi, Lord, ay bahala ka, ako humihingi sa iyo, nagdadasal ako sa iyo, but ultimately, I am patient, hindi ako magmamadali, in your perfect time, I will wait. I simply donate myself to your most loving will. At sinabi niya rin ho that he donates himself tumutulong sa mga tao that God wants him to help. And lastly, beside the, the, the fifth D, here's somebody who's made this decision. I will follow God. I've made errors and sins in the past, pero mas mabuti na magpabibo sa Diyos kaysa magpabibo sa tao. At yan ho ang talagang malaking takeaway natin kay Brother Wendell. We falter once in a while, but the big decision stays we make a decision to return to God. We're not perfect. We don't become sinless, but we sin less. Less yeah. today. Lesser tomorrow. Lesser the, the day after that. Because we have made the decision to follow Jesus. Binabago niya ang buhay natin araw, araw. So if you can... Join me in praying with them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for the gift of Brother Wendell. Thank you for the way you have been giving him the strength. Thank you for the way you've been blessing his life. Lord, model po siya dati. Sinabi niya, at ngayon nagpapatuloy siya. Model, pabibo, hindi na para sa tao, kundi para sa iyo. And we thank you for it, Lord, for your renewed and continual blessing of his life. Lord, we pray for all of us na mga nanunood at kasama dito sa feast natin ngayon. Some of us are struggling and some of us are longing for direction in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would give us the grace to choose Jesus. Lord, at this very moment, we pray that we are making a decision to turn over all of our desires to you. We make a decision to donate all of what we have under your will 
and we are making this decision to sit on the throne of our lives come into our hearts Lord Jesus be the Lord of my life be the Lord of my family be the Lord of my business be the Lord of my career be my Lord I want to follow and obey you from here on tulungan mo po ako bigyan mo ako ng lakas give us the grace embrace me with your love thank you for answering my prayers and all of these we pray in Jesus name amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen wow wow that was a very powerful message it blessed me it blessed me and wow god was thinking about me and god is thinking about you and i pray and i hope that it blessed you as well and may god's blessings not just stay in you but it grows in you and be shared to other people and speaking of sharing as we end the message for today who among you here wants to be really 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 blessed you may peace ka may joy ka because when we're praying for blessings, we always think, Lord, how can I receive? I'm going to work. I'm going to have lots of pipelines because I'm dadaan lahat ng blessings mo. But God is calling us right now to, to be part of the bigger blessing, which I call is giving. There was, there was an envy in my heart when people, alam nyo, sobrang grateful ako. A friend of mine gave me a Mac laptop, gave me a Logitech camera, and ang dahil pa binibigay sa akin, sabi ko, Lord, grateful ako. But I want more. When I said, when I said I want more, I want more not just to receive, but I want more that Lord give me time. Ako naman ang magbibigay ng max sa ibang tao. Ako naman ang bibigay ng mga gadgets sa ibang tao because you're giving overflow with me. And so this year, I was so happy because I was really giving this year. I was really giving not from my excess, not from my surplus, and it was even more to to my tithe. And alam nyo ang nangyayari, more doors of opportunities, more doors of blessings. Suddenly, parang nandiyan sila lahat ang dami. God has been providing for us. The peace was there, the joy was there, and umayin, the growth is happening in our business. I'm inviting you to grow your capacity to give, your capacity to, to be grateful. And I'm challenging everyone. I'm challenging everyone. How many are watching today? A thousand? If all of us, all of us who's receiving allowance, all of us who's receiving profit, all of us who's receiving income, I'm challenging everyone to give back to God. Give back to God your tithe. Make your tithe your 10%, your minimum, your standard. Make it and give it to God. This Sunday, I'm challenging everyone. You, we can give now through online later. It will, it will be posted to some bank account, PayPal, or kung paano send. But I'm, I'm challenging everyone to, to do this. Make your heart bigger for gratitude, ready to receive God's love by being a giver to others and experience a great joy and miracle in your life. Giving is not supposed to buy blessings. It's you're so grateful. And when you because you're so grateful, you're open for more blessings. So I'm going to pray for everyone. Lord, we pray for everyone who's giving today. Give us a grateful heart. Lord, today we're going to heed your call to be tithers. Hindi na po kami tippers today because we are grateful. And Lord, give us a generous heart. Increase our giving heart so that we can also increase our receiving heart. Lord, I pray for those who are giving today. Yung iba po kinakabahan. But Lord, we know 10% is napakaliit na halaga compared to whatever you're giving us. And I pray that you open more doors of opportunities, blessings to come. But let this giving not go in vain. But may this be in worshiping you, proclaiming your word, and being multiplied just in the five loaves and two fish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We'll live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring 